I think for a normal person, like this would be a pretty good set of just overall Switch games, right? These are all RPGs. This is just one genre. The Nintendo Switch is an absolute juggernaut when it comes to RPGs. There are so many, so many original ones, so many compilations, so many re-releases and remasters. It is absolutely flooded with RPGs. If RPG is your favorite genre, you are never going any time without a Switch game. It's just one after the other, and they never stop. And I want to go through the very difficult task of ranking my favorite ones. Now, these are my own personal tastes. There aren't that many Western games I generally gravitate towards Japanese stuff when it comes to RPGs. And of course, just defining what an RPG is can be pretty tough. But the way I see it is if I feel like it is an RPG, then it qualifies. Like, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is not an RPG. Like, yeah, it has RPG elements. Yeah, you can get equipment giving you better properties. But I look at that game and I don't see an RPG. Whereas I look at, let's just take one off here. I look at Harvestella, which like primarily may be a farming game. But also I look at that thing and I know it's an RPG. It's a sense. It's a sense we all have and we probably all disagree on what actually is an RPG and what isn't. Anyway, let's start ranking these babies. We are going to prioritize stuff that is brand new to this generation. Otherwise, counting all the re-releases would be very tough. So it's primarily brand new Switch games. Remakes do count. But if I feel like breaking the rules and just including a legacy game because I want to, I will do that. You can't stop me. Okay, let's go! For real! Unlike Bravely Second, which was a follow-up to the original, Bravely Default 2 is full-on its own thing. Original characters, original story, original world, but the same familiar, fantastic gameplay from one of the 3DS's best games. The Switch really did facilitate both home console and handheld entries just all in one big library, and seeing those hand-drawn towns in full HD was staggering. Now, I would consider the first Bravely Default to be one of the best 3DS RPGs, easily a top 5. So why is the second game at the bottom of this list? Well, quite frankly, there are just too many other fantastic games that I couldn't put this one over. The Switch is an absolute juggernaut for RPGs, so a game that would top the list of another system is just at the bottom of this one. And at number 20, we have Monster Hunter Stories 2. Now, I'm someone who just kind of dabbles in the core Monster Hunter series, but something about Stories 1 and 2 really hooked me. The world is simply incredible, with a brilliant art style. Like seriously, this is one of the best looking Switch games in my opinion. Everything from the voice direction, to the writing, to the visuals, to the soundtrack is just top tier. Although, the one thing still holding the series back for me is the combat system. It's definitely refined over the first game, but there's this rock-paper-scissors system to pretty much every move. Landing a hit in critical hits always has some luck in any RPG, but it's amplified here with this system. I don't love it, but it's just a small blemish in what's otherwise such a brilliant, heartfelt game. At number 19, we have Valkyria Chronicles 4. Now, this series went missing for a while here in the West. We got the original game on PlayStation 3 in 2008, a sequel on PSP, and then nothing until 2018. Now, admittedly, the first game and the fourth game have a decade between them, and not that much is different, really. It still looks and plays mostly the same, but it was so good in the first place. A tactical RPG where you can fully move around in third person, aim your weapons, get vehicles. It's just so much fun. War has never been this jolly and vibrant. I just adore this series, and while it's not really evolved since the original, there's so few other games like this that that doesn't really matter. Just more of a good thing isn't always bad. At number 18, we have Trials of Mana, the sequel to Secret of Mana. This originally released only in Japan on the Super Famicom, but many years later, that original Super Famicom game was finally localized into English in the West in Collection of Mana. And then, one year later, there was a full-on 3D remake. So which version are we putting here on the list? Well, let's favor the one that's a bit more specific to the Switch, being the Trials of Mana remake. Whether it's actually better than the Pixel version is up to you, but it's a pretty loyal remake, all things said. Now yeah, the voice direction is not the best in the world, but the game looks and sounds outstanding otherwise. It's a pretty literal adaptation of the original game, like the beats are all pretty much the same, the combat plays out pretty much the same, but the new visual look looks great. And heck, they even got some spirits in Smash for some reason. You go for it, Trials of Mana. At number 17, we have Harvestella. 
a true hidden gem of the Switch. Now, I'm a big fan of Final Fantasy The Crystal Chronicles My Life as a King from WiiWare, and this feels like a distant relative of that. It's basically a farming sim, which yes, the Switch has many of, mixed with a real-time RPG. Sometimes you're growing your crops and taking care of the town, but as the seasons change, things become a lot more oppressive, and all of a sudden it becomes quite a dark RPG. There's actual combat and a story to follow. This is a very different kind of farming game to anything else out there, and I highly, highly recommend it. At number 16, we have Tales of Vesperia. Now, the Tales of Symphonia port wasn't the best, as you can tell from our numerous videos on that game, but Tales of Vesperia had an excellent conversion to Switch. This is based off a Japanese release that previously had content that was never released in the West, so to most of us, this has brand new stuff you've never seen before. Now, this list does favor brand new games over ports, but sometimes just having a classic game on the go is so joyful. Especially those from the 360 era, the novelty of playing them on a train or something hasn't worn off even like seven years later. Vesperia just has a fantastic real-time combat system, one of the best stories in the series, and a look that still looks great, even... how long's it been? How long's how old's Vesperia? Fifteen years later! Good lord has it been that long. And number 15, we have another last-gen port, being Tokyo Mirage Sessions Encore. Now, when this was revealed, the tone of the game was definitely not set in stone yet. It was sort of pitched as quite a dark Fire Emblem and Shin Megami Tensei crossover, but instead, we basically got a brand new Shin Megami Tensei series. There's elements that are Persona-like. You're basically an idol living two different lives, one being a musician, and the other one being a dungeon crawler demon puncher. You don't really have to balance those lives, though. It's a much more linear, just following the story kind of RPG. And while this isn't usually my vibe, I don't really care for Japanese idols, I still found myself engrossed with everything the game had to offer. I really did dig the style, and I love the combat system. It's got the weapon triangle from Fire Emblem, so if you land a weakness, your allies can come in and sort of get a chain attack going. And if you do more side quests and become better friends with your allies, you can keep that chain going for a very long time. Now, the Switch-specific content isn't anything too extravagant. I mean, you can get costumes for Joker if you want to, but there's also some bonus side quests like getting Tiki in your party and a few other things, which they're all fine. But the core game just stands on its own as one of my favorite RPGs in recent memory. At number 14, we have Sea of Stars, a complete love letter to the genre's greatest games. While being very much its own thing, there's clear influence everywhere from Chrono Trigger, Mario RPGs, Golden Sun, and even more. Combat looks like Chrono Trigger, with different parties having different combinations they can do together. There's timing elements like Mario RPG, but it's just polished and presented in a way that we've never quite seen before. The level of pure love on display is crazy. Sea of Stars is easily this year's best looking game. If anyone's ever said that pixel art can't look beautiful, then just show them this game. It does some astonishing things. At number 13, we have Neo The World Ends With You. This game, sadly, just kinda came and went. It was never really advertised, and most people didn't even know that it released. And with a title like Neo, some weren't even aware that this game is a sequel. And yes, it's a sequel to one of the most beloved cult classic DS games. If you look at a list of top 10 DS games, there is such a high chance that it's gonna include The World Ends With You. So is the sequel good? Hell yeah it is! Maybe it's not quite as innovative as the original, but it finds a way to convert a lot of its energy and identity into a brand new form, and it works. There's like 300 different pins you can put onto each party member, making combat ridiculously varied. It's so easy to go from one party member to the other, given they're just mapped to a different button. And while the combat's changed a bit, the style is exactly as you remember, but this time in HD. And of course, a lot of it rests on the story, and the story in Neo is crazy good. If you loved the original, there are a lot of good payoffs in Neo. It is a must play for anybody who grew up with the DS version. At number 12, we have Live Alive! So, probably the best thing that Octopath Traveler did, as great as that game is, is it paved the way for more HD 2D games. We've got stuff like Triangle Strategy, we've got the upcoming remake of Dragon Quest 3 which looks beautiful, and we have Live Alive, a remake of a Super Famicom exclusive. 
Live Alive is basically a bunch of smaller RPGs just sort of merged into one. There's smaller stories that span different points in time, so there's like a prehistoric chapter, or a future chapter, or a not too distant future chapter, and each of them is remarkable. There's definitely stronger ones than others, but even at its weakest, this game is so good, and it eventually all comes together in a really satisfying way. And the combat system is great too, it's like a little merge of strategy and traditional turn-based RPG. You can move around a small grid like a strategy game, but basically your moves just kind of dictated on space. Do you have enough space to reach the opposing enemy? It's a really unique system that's always fun, and HD2D has been refined to a shimmering gleam. So many set pieces just look like some of the best things the Switch has ever rendered. And the writing! The writing is real good. Less it's fresh from your mother's tits. Your mother's, maybe. At number 11, we have the newest game on this list, Super Mario RPG. The original Mario RPG is still one of my favorites of any Mario RPG, and I'm not entirely sure if that's gonna change. The remake really does everything justice, nothing is watered down. All those enemies you remember and their wacky designs are intact, and it's just kinda like they've taken the pre-rendered look of the original game, and rendered it. It's a faster game than the original too. Some animations that were kinda sluggish on the Super Nintendo are now just really rapid. It's also a bit more obvious on when you should time your attacks, and all in all, they've just kind of improved the original game without really tampering with much at all. Just small little tweaks here and there, and that's all it really needed. Mario RPG is a timeless classic. At number 10, we have Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now, while Engage is also a very good game, I think Three Houses just sort of encompasses a layer of what the Switch is. Like, it's hard to think about the Nintendo Switch without Fire Emblem Three Houses. It really gave the series another boost of popularity, and more than any other game, it made it more than just battles. You can roam around the school and more tangibly build your relationships, and there's just so many more layers to Three Houses. And of course, because you're choosing one of three different houses, there's quite a bit of variety to it too. One playthrough is not going to be like another. And so you may play through the game with Edelgard, but that's going to offer a different story and a different progression to choosing Dimitri or Claude. I do think Engage has the better strategy gameplay, but the overall whole is just more cohesive in three houses. At number 9, we have Persona 5 Royal, and man, this game had a journey getting to the Switch! For me, Persona has always been a portable series. I started on PS2, but it wasn't until PSP that I really got into these games, playing Persona 1 and 2 and 3 Portable, and later on Vita, 4 Golden, which was where I recognized that Persona was one of my favorite franchises in all of video games. And of course, Joker came to Smash, he had a costume in Tokyo Mirage Sessions, he had spin-offs, he had so much more, even the sequel was on Switch. But it took until 2022 for Persona 5 Royal to finally come to Switch. And of course, it's glorious. The story of the Phantom Thieves is one of the best in the series, the vibes are off the chart with incredible music and really stylish menus and visuals, and as always, managing your time between all this dungeon crawling and your social life is extremely addicting. You're never gonna do everything, so deciding what takes priority is just part of the journey. What matters more to you? What do you want to build? What relationships do you want to chase? And just like on PSP and Vita, Persona is best as a portable game. It's just so easy to pick it up and play, and this is how I love playing Persona. At number 8 is Shimigami Tensei 5. Now I think more than any other RPG on this list, this really lives and dies on the gameplay. Shimigami Tensei 5 is very in-depth, you'll constantly be shifting your team around and managing what you want it to look like, and then the combat itself has so many different layers. This game is still a Switch exclusive to this day, and while it technically may be pushing a little bit too far, I still think it looks pretty beautiful. Having these sprawling, open 3D environments that you can quickly run around, and having monsters just roaming around in the world waiting to engage with you. The story definitely gets better as it goes on, but it's not really the highlight of this game. This is more for those who really love the combat of an RPG, and given that this is basically the grandfather of JRPGs, you definitely owe it its time. If this game can click with you, it is one of the best on the Switch. At number 7, we have 13 Sentinels, one of the best video game stories ever told. And it's one of those stories that couldn't really be done outside of a game, it would just be lesser in any other medium. This is done by Vanillaware, who you'll know for games like Murumasa and Dragon's Crown, and it's still just as stunning as any of those games. 
This was originally a PlayStation 4 exclusive, but thankfully it did get ported to the Switch, and it's honestly so much more comfortable here. Just lying in bed and watching one of the most wacky and out there stories unfold right in front of you while doing these sort of bite-sized combat sections. It is an utter beauty from presentation to audio to character design to character direction to just everything feels near perfect in 13 Sentinels. I don't want to say much more than that, just have the experience yourself. At number 6 we have Dark Souls Remastered, and I have broken a rule with this one. The Switch version doesn't really offer anything new, this is an older game, it's basically just the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 version on the go, with a better frame rate. So why is it on this list? Well, because Portable Dark Souls is a damn dream. The first Dark Souls is still one of my favorite From Software games, and the actual remaster on PS4 and Xbox One had elements I didn't really love. So just having the pure experience available with the flexibility of the Switch is beautiful. You can essentially pause the game now by putting it in standby, so Dark Souls kind of has a pause button. It is just so well designed, and is easily one of the best RPGs ever made, one of the best games ever made. And the only reason it isn't higher on this list is because it's not solely original. I think there are newer games more deserving of recognition, but if you've got a Switch and you've never played Dark Souls, or you've played Elden Ring and you want to play more, then please go back and play this one. It really has not aged a day, and it's so addicting to learn and master. And at number 5 we have Star Ocean 2, my favourite game in the series. This is another kind of Square Enix HD 2D game, although I don't think it was ever really advertised as such. It's a bit off kilter compared to the other HD 2D games, where it's basically these full 3D polygonal environments, but the same beautiful 32-bit looking sprites with modern lighting. It is just visually very odd, but very staggering. Its real-time combat, which was already really good, now has even more layers, with characters reserved from your party being able to contribute. And there's chain attacks and so much more. It really is just an evolution of the original game that brings it up even further. The story is incredible and goes places you wouldn't expect. The music is top tier, and they have just done such a great job remaking this game. It's the second remake of this game. Like the first Star Ocean on Switch is just a port of the PSP remake, but they already remade 2 on PSP as well, but then they remade it again, because Star Ocean 2 is just that good that it can have two remakes. This is Star Ocean 2 Remake 2. And at number 4 we have one of the best games of 2023, Octopath Traveler 2. And you may be thinking, John, are you sure? Is Octopath 2 really one of the best games of the year this video was published? And yeah, hell yeah it was! I know it's got no Game of the Year nominations, which is a crime, but this is so much better than the first Octopath. If you played Octopath 1 and thought, like, yeah, that was fine, there wasn't anything incredible, this is gonna blow your socks off. It basically improves upon the original game in every way possible. The story is better, the characters are more interesting, and they actually interact now. It just fully realizes what Octopath Traveler was meant to be in the first place and makes a near perfect RPG. There's so few things wrong with this game. The pacing is immaculate. The combat system is incredible. It is honestly just one of the best RPGs I've ever played. This is up there with Chrono Trigger and the Golden Age of Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest V as one of the best RPGs. So what's the top three? At number three, we have Ring Fit Adventure. Is this an RPG? Yeah. Wii Fit was a phenomenon, you know, turning video games into exercise. It was a really good idea, but there wasn't really a structure to it. You know, you participate because you want to participate, because you want to lose weight, because you want to watch the numbers go down, or you want to get bulkier. And that is good. But Ring Fit Adventure is a full-on game. There's a story, there's levels, there's battles. It's not so much that you're exercising because you want to better yourself. You're exercising because that's how the game works. This is a pretty traditional turn-based RPG with actual strategy elements and healing and buffs and debuffs and all sorts. But you actually have to go through with these exercises to pull off all these moves. And especially the Drago boss fights can get very intense, as you've got to do a bunch of reps to take on these bosses. And it's got that very addictive one more game approach. So you actually, you, you kind of get addicted to exercising. And I can't say any other video game has achieved that outside of maybe some dance games. But yeah, this is full on an RPG, and I think for what it achieves, it absolutely deserves to be recognized as one of the best. And by the way, it is sold better <laughs> than just about any other RPG of recent memory. 
And at number two, we have Xenoblade. Two, three, definite. I can't decide. Xenoblade's had a crazy journey. We've gone from NOA having no interest in the game, so it had to be localized cheaper in Europe and having all these British accents, to that basically being the identity of the series, and now it has a full trilogy on the Switch, and it is a flagship franchise for the core Nintendo fans. Every single one of these games has a pro that the other doesn't. I feel like the first game has the coolest world, you know, it's just two frozen titans that have been locked in a battle and you walk on them. Every single part of the world is part of these titans. But two has my favorite characters, and three has the best combat, three's the most fun to play. But really, it should be taken as one whole. When the first Xenoblade came out, I was pretty sure that was a one-off. I thought it would never be followed up. But then 2 came along, and 2's ending did something that so few other sequels can do, which is enhance the prior game. And then 3, while still very much being its own thing, just celebrates everything that came before, especially in the expansion Future Redeemed. And by the way, Torna should be included in this too, which is also very good, and Future Connected is also alright. But while I can't just land on one because I'll regret it the next day and be like, why didn't you go for that one? I think just, let's just put Xenoblade here. One, two, three, all of them. They should all share the second spot. So, what gets number one? That's right, and number one, it's one of the best games of this generation. It's Dragon Quest XI S. Now, this game doesn't try to do anything too different. Dragon Quest is a very traditional series that basically pioneered what turn-based RPGs are. Basically, everything on this list is owed to Dragon Quest. And some games in this series do mix things up, like how 4 has different chapters with different characters, 5 has monster collecting, but Eleven is just kinda your basic Dragon Quest, and that's what I love about it. It isn't embarrassed by its legacy, it embraces it. It just gives you a very polished, traditional RPG. No bells and whistles on top of that. It is just RPGs in their purest form. But of course, there is more to it than that. The cast is absolutely incredible, and it just gets better and better the more it goes. The more you unlock the world, when you start sailing, when you take to the skies. If you've ever loved a traditional turn-based RPG, Dragon Quest XI is going to remind you why you love them so much, and go beyond that. And of course, the S version is even better than the original, which was a PS4 exclusive. This one gives you faster battles, orchestrated music, a bunch of extras, and on the Switch, it's portable, which honestly is the best fit for this game. Like just grinding the casino while you're in a casino. This is what video games are about, and Dragon Quest XI S is the quintessential RPG and something every single Switch fan should own, or at least give a try. There's a crazy long demo that's like 15 hours long, so do it! Do it now! Also, there's a whole 2D version of this game just crammed in here. They remade the game in 2D. In fact, they remade the game in low poly 3D as well in Japan for the 3DS. There's three Dragon Quest XI's. It's crazy. Please play one of them. So how much do you disagree with my ranking? I'm sure everyone in the comments is thrilled. They're all saying, good job, John. Couldn't have ranked it better myself. They're all saying, woohoo, and they're throwing me over their shoulders. Yeah, you are correct to not put a single Final Fantasy game on this list. Good job, buddy. Anyway, thanks for watching all the way through, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everyone.